Welcome back to another episode of Excuse My Grandma. It's Kim and my co-host. And my gal. Before we get into the interview with our guest, I want to remind you all to follow us on TikTok and on Instagram. If you're on either of those platforms, we really could use your support on there. We love talking to you all um, in the comments and when you message us privately in the DMs. And also, if you have any ideas about how we could grow the podcast, what guests you want us to have on, please let us know on there as well. Okay, we're going to get into the interview relatively quickly this week just because she brings the positive vibes and I feel like let's keep it short and sweet. Let's have all the positive vibes on this Thursday or whatever day you were listening. Achiang Agutu, you may have seen her on social media. Uh, She has these incredibly positive videos about self-confidence. She's originally from Kenya and came to the U.S. as a teenager. She's very inspiring. So we hope you enjoy. All right, you guys, we are joined by Achiang Agutu. She calls herself the tantalizing confidence queen. I was showing grandma some videos earlier just of her uplifting and empowering her followers. She just makes me want to love myself. And I love that. Achiang, thank you for joining us. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. I'm super excited for today. Yes. So we asked all of our guests their age, relationship status, and where they're from and currently living. I'm 25. Oh. I am. I have a, a plethora of, of lovers right now. I um, I'm originally from Kenya, but I live in New York. Wait a minute! Send some of these lovers Kimmy's way. You don't need all those lovers. <laughs> don't take up all the space. Share the wealth. <laughs> As I was saying before, your videos are just so fun and positive. And I love like your affirmations. Like you're saying to people, you know, you're enough, you're safe, you're good. Like you've got to give yourself a pat on the shoulder and be proud to look the way you look, to feel the way you feel and to be who you are. And, you know, for a long time, people didn't act like that, especially women. And um, I think you're doing a Mm -hmm. tremendous job. But I'm curious. Now, when did you come to the United States? At what age? Because you're very young. I, I moved when I was um, 16. I moved when I was 16. This was in 2013. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I moved to Richmond, Indiana. It's a crazy place. Mm-hmm. And um, it, was, it was it was very interesting. I'm glad I made that move. I think my, you know, my experiences, my life experiences have been very much um, because of like me being in the United States and me being able to like be in a society where I feel like I can be myself and not feel stifled and like really come to, you know, me as a woman moving around the world. So. Mm-hmm. Sure. And have yeah. you always had so much like self-love or like, did it take you to, a while to get to the point you're at now? It's been a journey. It's been a journey. And like I just said earlier, like in Kenyan culture, women are taught and kind of, you know, forced to be this very small, minute, Mm. second-class person. Like, there's there's not so much of an importance that's put towards women. So even, like, in my family, um, they would only let the men speak. I'm curious, like, when you look to, I don't know if you're close with your mother or your grandmother even, what was their kind of approach to that dynamic? They couldn't help it. I think it's just to give them their space like they only it's like you put the man first that's kind of how it has always been and like I've been having conversations with my mom about like how she is now coming to um all her kids are like out of the out of the house living elsewhere and um trying to figure out like who she is because she had to just like from the get-go get married be this perfect wife and perfect mother and perfect you know sister-in-law and and all these things where she just had to do things like I don't know how to describe it, but no, she had to put things for others. She didn't do anything. Yes, else. No. right. No. And she never had the opportunity to really explore, explore herself, or like even have the voice, you know, to to be who she wants to be and do the things that she wants to do. And I feel like my experience, where now I've been, I had a lot of my formative years in a different country, where I had the space to, you know, explore myself and and be loud and vivacious and vibrant and and not really conform to these norms of telling, you know, women to be quiet and, you know, you have to look like this, you have to be dainty, which is fine. But I think just having the space to grow is really amazing for them. The freedom to do what you want. Mm -hmm. That's really good. Now, is mom still in Kenya? 
Or is she in yes. an architecture? So, okay. Well, it's very different. Culturally, mm -hmm. you know, all these societies are very, very different. And and we're very fortunate here as women in America. We're probably the, the most liberal of all countries. To yeah, really but it's interesting because I feel like as Achiang is talking, it's like, it kind of sounds like we're still, and even in America, in that role a lot yes. of the time. Yeah. So I yeah. don't think it's that far off. Well, it's, yeah, it's I think it's... It, it is far off, Kimmy. It, I, I, it's not the way you you have a choice. You don't have to be one way. Mm -hmm. That's the difference here. If you mm -hmm. want to, that's another story. But you have the freedom to express yourself and be whoever you want to be. Yeah, and I think like you like it's also you deciding, like you deciding that you're going against the status quo and and living your life for you because you have one life on this earth and you have to live it for yourself, not for the. Um, pleasure of other people or to to please a society or a community or family that you know love you but you need to do it for yourself mm -hmm. when did you start kind of taking the message of self-love and everything onto social media and sharing that with people um it was during the pandemic you know everybody was doing their banana breads and, <laughs> and whipped coffee and dance videos and um i had started my really being intentional about my healing journey and felt like we're all kind of alone. Like, who was I talking to? Like, even if I was talking to my friends and family and, you know, Zooming and all that, I felt like I wanted to connect to like a bigger um, community. I needed something more. And so I just like started posting videos of me dancing or of me um, trying something new or <clears throat> things I learned in therapy, um, things that I'm discovering about myself. And there was a lot of, you know, especially women who are reaching out to me and being like, that's really amazing that you're talking about that because that's something I'm going through. Or, you know, women who are like, you know, you look like me, you talk like me. And the fact that we have these experiences is really, you know, inspiring for me, but I just, just feel seen. And um, when I started getting that feedback, I was like, yeah, I should just continue posting and, and seeing how that, you know, influences people, but what that also does for me and my growth. Well, well, I want a few of them, and you're fabulous. <laughs> also, Thank you. but, oh, it also all, makes you feel that not everybody has to be size two and to be glamorous, because you are very glamorous, and you're a big woman, and and you're proud of it, and that's yes. and and that's what makes you so fabulous for others to identify with. And that's really the clue, because up until now, you had no one, people who looked like you or perhaps even pe old people who look at me don't have anybody really to relate to. So you're showing that you can be beautiful no matter what body type you have. And it's fabulous. You're, you're terrific. There's some people like, well, what's so brave about what I'm doing? Like, I'm being myself. Like, it's, mm -hmm. you know, it's not that different. But like, I want you to talk to that a little bit because. I know a lot of people can kind of say the wrong thing and it's like, you're normal for you. I'm normal for me. She's normal for her. And there's no like right way to look. Right. right. Yeah. I think when people see someone living in a way that they can't comprehend or that they don't feel like they can do, it feels like that's so different. That's so brave, but it's normal, right? It's normal for me to be doing what I do and loving my body the way it is. But definitely I feel like the, the sentiment of people saying like you're so brave like you are so powerful like yeah I feel those things but no I'm just living in my truth um and I think when people come to that point when you just start living for you and living in your own truth then like it might seem different for other people and it might seem like whoa that's that's different that's crazy that's brave that's powerful but it's just me being me mm -hmm. how does everyone find their own thing that makes them feel confident or beautiful or like have that level of self-love because it's kind of, I don't want to say like cliche, but a lot of people now are like, you know, go for a jog or like watch a good movie, eat healthy. I'm like, that's not really a, what works for everybody. So how do you find what works for yourself? I think, you know, I, and I continue to talk about this. It's really exploring yourself, you know, actually just like take time to sit and think of like, what do I love? Mm -hmm. What do I want? Where do I want to be? Like, what things that like bring me joy, that make my soul smile, that you know, um, that scare me, that that fright that frighten me, that um, empower me. So, like, actually sitting down with yourself and like exploring yourself, like, and maybe those like those walks will help. A little walk down the street, uh -huh. or a good walk, or um, hang out with friends, or trying out something new, or just 
being in a state, like there's a sweet spot. There's a sweet spot in your life where you just find um, yourself. Yeah. And yeah, I think it just goes with like figuring out how you can explore yourself. And it, it means different things for different people, but like just like really sitting down with yourself, your thoughts and everything and exploring that. Yeah, and I feel like grandma says this to me sometimes. She's like, your generation is kind of selfish and whatever, but I don't think it's really selfish to work on yourself. I know I don't I don't mean it that I think that everybody's too much about me. I would say uh in, in this generation that it's more of what would be better would be to think of the village. <laughs> the village should help each other and we should all you have to explore yourself and get your own identity, but we need to reach out to the community because there's so many people out there that need help. And that's my only reference. Well, I, it can't all not, be yeah. about me. It, the <laughs> me thing is really over as far as after COVID, me is over. Uh, I think <laughs> we have to think about the larger community and helping out and reaching our, you know, extending our hand to everyone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I think it's a balance because, I mean, you do this really well of like your videos are both helping yourself and helping other yeah, people well, because you're pumping them up as well. Like, why do you think it is important for even us listening at home to try to, I don't know, make their family and their friends feel really good? As in like, it's a whole thing about community, right? And I think for me, the way I've seen it is that the, the only way I can give to my community is if I feel myself, right? And so I think it's important to like really uplift the people around you because then that just empowers your tribe, empowers you. You know, when you have a great support system around you, that's like really empowering and really powerful. Mm -hmm. And um, I feel like even talking to my parents, um, they talk to me sometimes like, you know, like your videos and, and what you do and what you say, like they've never heard people talk to them like that. Yeah, they're like, like, you know, bitch. like grandma <laughs> yeah, like, oh. literally, you know, or you know, my dad just retired last year. And he's like also trying to like come to and like figure out like what he loves doing and you know what's his vibe like as somebody who's not actively working and him watching my videos for somebody to say like that thing that you've been wanting to do for so long do it now right and so it's a whole thing of like really empowering your tribe and i think that's what i really want to do for myself and my community and the people around me so mm -hmm. You were just saying what you wear. I think you have the coolest fashion sense. Um, Thank you. <laughs> that contributes to like the way you feel on the inside of like what you're, where you're shopping and what you're putting on and how you're putting it together. Mm -hmm. I think um, I used to like dress for a specific reason. I think for a really long time, I used to dress for the male gaze. Mm -hmm. And um, I would wear this because I thought, oh, it would get this um, reaction or get this. And I would never felt comfortable. I was in public always thinking about what is somebody thinking of how I look? Should I sit like this? Should I do this? So I was just never, ever comfortable. And so when I just decided, like, I want, I want to dress in things that look good on my body, not for what society is telling me or this is the trend, like what feels good on my body, what makes me feel like I can walk around and be a queen. And so when I just like started dressing for myself and exploring different styles and I, I'm not wearing color right now, <laughs> but- you wear a I lot love, of color. I've seen I, them <laughs> they're I love they're great. vibrant. <laughs> Thank you. you design those or, or is somebody helping you that are, are they actual items that somebody can purchase like in a store that if you you know your fans would say oh gosh I would love to own that as well or are they made specifically for you to wear on the videos um some of them I've worked with um um African designers to like make something fun and specific for me because I also want something that like is specific like unique to me but mm -hmm. Most of the things I wear, you can um, buy them in stores. It's just the way you put them together. People are like, oh, I didn't know you could wear it like that. Or mm -hmm. I didn't know that color looks good on. Yeah, it does. Mm -hmm. Yeah, It's the styling. Yeah. You know, a lot to do with the styling. So I asked our right. followers to write in a bunch of questions. And they had amazing. Well, I feel like normally we don't do this. We but don't, never these do are, this. These are really good questions, I thought. Um, so I would love to go through a few. Yes. Um. So someone wrote in staying confident going into your 30s if you have any advice for that I know you and I are kind of the same age do you have any fear about like going into your 30s at all and if so how do you combat that no I actually 
um, have no fears. I think um, people think that once you, you get to 30, it's it's downhill. No, it's not. What am I going to say? So- I'm really in trouble. <laughs> I'm over the hill. <laughs> <laughs> you know, people kind of think like you're just thrown out to the pastures, like your 20s are the best and then 30s are like, you know, have to be specific. Like, no, you should be so excited that you're going to be 30. You should just be seeing this like as a new era. Like you can literally redefine yourself. Like the 20s were cute. Love that. But what are the 30s looking like for you? You know, get your queen energy on, get your vibes on, go try something new. If you want to date, go date new people. Travel with your girlfriends, like this should be exciting for you. Like, do not be afraid. Love that. Oh, speaking mm-hmm. of, a lot of our questions were about dating here. Um, someone said, uh, how do you stay confident to find your person when you get ghosted after a few dates? Another person said, or if you don't hear from them after you thought the date went well, how do you stay confident after that? Dating is really hard. Um, I would say anything that anybody else does has nothing to do with you and everything to do with them. And so if this person ghosts you, okay, let's leave the ghost in the past. Let's leave the dead in the past. Let's move on. Right. So you just have to stay strong in yourself, like as a person, a woman, a man, like this is who I am. You're the prize 24, 7, 365. So you're the prize. Remember that. Remember your worth, remember your value. Somebody ghosting you is their loss. They didn't have the confidence, which you have. They didn't have the confidence to come and talk to you and say like, you know, this is not happening for me. This is not, um, this is not what I'm feeling. And you should see that as a turn off. Mm-hmm. Don't, don't see that as like, oh, this is showing badly on me or it's making me feel sad. You should see that as a turn off to you. It is disgusting. And that's all that. Good for you. I love it. Do you so yeah, I have a hundred percent. I've always said that to you. Don't waste any time on somebody who ghosts you. Who cares? Move on to the yeah. next one. You're too good for them. Or yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Someone wrote, heading to college for freshman year. How do you build your confidence when meeting new people? Oh, that's a hard one. Um, I I remember my freshman year. I was so afraid. My 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 host parents, they dropped me off. And I cried the whole night. I called them the next, I was like, come pick me up. I hate it here. I literally had not met anyone. I was really terrified. Um, And and it's fine to be like afraid and scared about it, but college is so fun. You should really see this as like, kind of like an experience to meet people from like such different walks of life. You could literally be best best friends with somebody from Spain, somebody from the Congo. You could be friends with somebody who's had like such different life experiences from you. And something that I did when um, my my freshman year, I was trying to make friends on my floor. And so I put out like a big poster board on my door and I wrote like the start of a story. And at the bottom, I say like, finish it. And so everybody from the, from the, the our hall was like writing different things, like finishing the story. And then at the end, um, I asked my RA if she could like have a little group thing and then I would read the story to them. And that's how we made friends. Like that's how I made some of my best friends. That's true. Yeah, yeah. That's like an clean. interactive activity, yeah. not just, cause sometimes people do get weird if you just go up to them and like start chatting, even though that's yeah. not a weird thing to do at all. Well, um, certainly not going to college for the first time. Yeah, everyone's, I think everybody, in, the same everyone's in the same boat. Yeah. So, you know, it is nerve wracking for everybody. Mm-hmm. And you know what? You get, you you make friends. It just takes a little while. Yeah, I feel, like, I feel like I did have that effort though. Like I treated it like dating for a romantic partner. I was like girl dating every single person I met. Like, do you want to go to coffee on Tuesday? Do you want to have dinner on what? Like you have to make an effort yes, and make the right. time. Yes. Um, which is kind of crazy. And the only time in life I kind of had to do that um, because I feel like, in, but for people who move or like move to new it's cities or whatever, it's like the same thing and again and again. And I guess you have to make the same effort. Every a time. new job or anything. Yeah, yeah true. You know, it's yeah. all. It's- mm-hmm. Agreed. Is the phrase fake it till you make it realistic when it comes to confidence? Yes. Hmm. 100%. Yes. I had to trick myself every single day that I was confident because I knew there was a version of me a year from that day, 10 years from that day that was waiting for me to do what I needed to do to be this person. And so, yeah, I had to fake it till I make it. And that was walking into a room, holding my my head up high and acting like I'm the baddest, the best, the one and only 
I had to fake it till you make it. Like that's, it's true. Mm -hmm. um, and like something that I did that I still do right now is I created this version of myself that was the most confident woman ever. And I, if I was in spaces where I just felt like I'm feeling really shy, I'm feeling like I don't belong or anything, I would literally tap in, like, you know, like a relay race and you're passing <laughs> on the baton, that would be me. It was like confident and chain, where are you? You're here, tap in, you know? So yes, fake it till you make it, it works. It's worked for me. So yeah. Yeah. I feel like that's a really good tool to have like an alter ego almost. Yeah. Like a little like yeah. <laughs> in your brain when you get nervous. Yeah. Does yes. What would yours be named? I don't know. <laughs> Maybe mine would be named Kimberly because I I, I have you with my phone all the time. We could just switch places. We could just switch places. <laughs> but if you, you have to really make it, you know, really try to calm yourself down, mm -hmm. go to a better place mm -hmm. and figure out, you know what, I'm in a new place. I'll work it. It'll all come about. But I got to put a smile on your face. Mm -hmm. You got to be a phony a little bit in those situations, just like you said. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, you are in a surrounding that you're not comfortable with. Yeah. How to stay confident when going through losing my mother to COVID oh. and I'm grieving. Oh, that's different. Mm -hmm. Grieving is is really hard. Um, I think grief doesn't need confidence. I think it's it's a process and it grieving looks different for so many people. Um I would just say honestly, just going through those motions. You don't need to be strong, you don't need to be anything you just need to do what you need to do to to go through that process but also reaching out for support if you have it and when you need it like that's really important um and i think maybe it's the really, confidence very really good to, yeah yeah it's yeah. the the confidence to reach out right because mm -hmm. sometimes people are afraid when you're going through stuff you don't you feel like you don't want to impose on people but maybe the only confidence you need is to like be able to like reach out to people and say hey i really need a shoulder to lean on right now Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and yeah. that's a good friend or a clergyman or a clergy woman mm -hmm. come into it really play because you do sometimes or a therapist or, or, well I don't think a, a lot of people use therapists for for well no grief yes, counselors yes you're right so or anyone that you can rely on to get you know some kind of uh pat on the shoulder and that it's going to be okay you just have to work through it and and everybody has it there's nobody in this world that doesn't have some, at some point have some mm -hmm. grief so, yeah. uh, and you're just mm -hmm. part of life. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Someone said, how do you beat imposter syndrome as a minority woman applying for a job? A what syndrome? Imposter. Mm -hmm. I don't even know what that is. Could imposter you imposter syndrome? Yeah. Imposter syndrome is like kind of feeling like you don't belong somewhere or like you don't like you've made it to a space and you're like, actually, I don't know if I belong here. Like I'm feeling like I'm, I'm acting in mm -hmm. some kind of way. Um, imposter syndrome is such, my dad's is such a disease. It really is. Um, something that I've always been taught is that you really belong. You belong. And I think that that's where you need to start. Like realizing that you belong in those spaces anywhere you you are, anything you've achieved, anything that you have succeeded in, you deserve it and you belong to be there. And nothing else and no one else should ever make you feel less, including yourself. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah. That's I like very that. good. That's, mm -hmm. that's excellent. Um, there were a lot of questions about like motherhood and young kids. I don't know. No, well, I that, mean, we you could, guys are too young to give advice on that. Well, I don't know. Like, right, maybe you can then grandma, like someone was like, I'm in the throes of motherhood with young kids and really struggling with self-confidence. Any tips? Well, no, I have to throw that back. <laughs> oh, well, see, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I think um, I think a lot of women um, find it hard to like come back to themselves after having a child and have after, you know, pregnancy. Something that I also tell my friends who just like have recently had babies is that your body is literally a temple. You grew life mm -hmm. in your body. And that should make you feel, you know, sometimes it might be hard, but like, you should like see your body as literally the most powerful thing, you know, regardless of what it looks like and regardless of how you feel, um, really seeing that you are powerful. And then something else is also accepting your body. I think, you know, people think you can snap back like Kim K and have that, you know, skinny waist and all that in two months. 
No, it's, it's going with accepting your body. Like this is my body right now. And maybe I might not love it right now in, in the way it looks, but that's fine. This is what it's, it's done. I have just given birth to life. The best, the baddest thing, the most, like, please, you are a superhero, honey. Okay. And accepting your body for the way it looks and just living in that. I think that is like the first step. The advice we used to get was you, it, it took nine months to have a baby and it takes nine months if you wish to go back to your old shape to go back to it and don't rush it. It all goes back. But you should, as as uh, we're we're discussing, be proud. You've done the most fabulous thing that any woman can really do is to produce life. So therefore, don't worry about it. You don't worry. You don't have to be size seven, eight, ten, twelve, whatever it is. Just enjoy it. Mm -hmm. um, this question might be for mm -hmm. both of you. Or I'm curious what both of your responses are. Um, how how can older ladies like Grandma Gail stay confident? It's, it's like does it even change depending well, on think, your age? I or? think it changes when you when circumstances change. Uh, you know, if you're not comfortable, whether you've lost a partner or you have lost a friend and you're wandering around mm -hmm. looking for that friend again, another friend to substitute, and it's not so easy to make friends at a later stage in your life. That of course there are things and you have to just like she said, you gotta go and get somewhere deep inside, you gotta pull out that bitch thing of you, whatever you want to say, and come out and be confident and say, I'm going to find somebody. See, I can say that word, Kim. It's a bad bitch. <laughs> bad bitch. <laughs> well, you got to be a bad bitch at 80 or 70, the same as when 20. It's no different. Now, don't crack up. Yes. <laughs> it's true. I mean, <laughs> love it. I think that's going to be my new slogan. I might get a sweater, bad bitch on it. Oh, God. That could be the new. We, we started. Oh, my God. I'll send you one. I love that. Yes. yes. <laughs> Just hang around with us while long enough. You'll go crazy. I don't know. Literally. <laughs> Good advice, guys. Well, I would love to end the episode with a game that we play with all of our guests, Grandma Gail's Old Fashioned Dating Quiz. So we will go through some hypotheticals and determine whether you are more of a modern dater or more of a traditional dater. I know she's good where she's going. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, but sometimes, usually I'm right. L lately, I've been re really on. Okay. <laughs> ha Chang, would you rather receive a call or a text if it's just to say hi from the person you're dating? A call. Would you sleep with someone on the first date? It depends on if I'm interested in him and if I want to sleep with him that night. Yeah, yeah, it depends. Dating apps or setups? Say that again. Oh, uh, setups. Okay. Yes. Um, move in together before getting engaged or wait until you're engaged or married to move in? I will wait. Hmm. Okay. Wait. Yeah. She's coming to my side, see? Yeah. <laughs> Do you think that one person in the relationship should be paying for the date or should you alternate or split? I think they should pay. <laughs> I love Wait, you. So you're mostly traditional. She's 100%. No, no, no. <laughs> one thing, one thing and yeah. she's not sure. Yeah. <laughs> she's not sure anymore. Yeah. How do you like that? <laughs> Watching. Thank you so much for joining us. This was so much fun. Tell our listeners how they can follow you and watch all your videos. Awesome. Well, first of all, you guys are so fabulous. This was so delicious. It's a great treat to my day. Um, but you can find me on TikTok and on Instagram at No Ordinary Noir. Come join us. It's a tantalizing, sexy part of the internet. We have fun. We dance. We drink mimosas. Join us. Join me. You're terrific. You're you're really wonderful. I love you. Yeah, this is so Thank fun. you so much. I'm going to spend the yeah. afternoon watching these videos. <laughs> Another great episode of Excuse My Grandma. We hope you guys enjoyed the interview. And remember again, please follow us. Please share the podcast. It's Excuse My Grandma. And we will see you next week.